Now, if you are anything like me, you must have been a little bit disappointed after GPT-4 released and we did not have the ability to upload or talk to images with ChatGPT. Well, I'm happy to inform you that the wait is now over. There is now an open source product called Mini GPT-4. And what Mini GPT-4 allows you to do is upload an image and have a conversation with a chatbot about that image. Now, this is very exciting stuff because I was so excited to try out this feature with GPT-4 and I never got the ability to until now. Now, I don't want to waste any more time, so let's jump into Mini GPT-4 so I can show you how to use it and some examples of what it can do. Now, this is the homepage for Mini GPT-4. It's very simple. As you can see, they are enhancing vision language understanding with advanced LLMs. Now, this is a video showing some examples of what this can do, and it's very powerful. It's a very cool video, so we can watch through some of these use cases real quick. As you can see, they have a picture here of a leaf. Somebody says, what's the issue with my plant? What should I do now? And what this chatbot does is it gives a description of what it's seen in this image. It says, this image shows a leaf with brown spots on it. The spots are likely caused by a fungal infection. And then it goes into identifying how you can treat that issue. Now, the very cool thing, in my opinion, about Mini GPT-4 is that it can also use logic within its pictures. So this first prompt here says, describe this image. This image shows a cactus standing in the middle of a frozen lake. And then the second question this person asked was, can this happen in the real world? And the chatbot said, no, this image is not common in the real world. And then it continues to go into detail about how these large ice crystals forming on the water are also not common. So it's very cool that this language model can draw logic from pictures and kind of apply this to the real world. Now, if you wanna demo this yourself, you can. What you can either do is just use this demo they have here on the homepage, or what I like to do is click this little demo button here in the middle and it will take you to a separate page in order to do so. So here we can follow the basic instructions in order to get started. I am going to drag a couple images in here and we are going to chat with them. The first thing I'm going to do is upload this plate of food here. I'm going to open this image. And then after I upload the image, what I can do is hit upload and start chat. And it's going to put you in a queue right now. It looks like I'm six of six within the queue. So this is going to take about 48.5 seconds in order to actually upload to the chat. So that is one downside right now. It is a little bit slow, but the fact that this technology is available, it's open source, it's free, um, it's very cool to see and it's fun to mess around with. So even if right now it's taking a little bit of time up front, I'm sure this is only gonna get quicker and I'm just excited that I have the ability to use this technology and that anybody has the ability to try this out for themselves. And now my image is right here. And this is looking very similar to ChatGPT. They give you a little input box where you can ask questions or make statements. So what I've done is I've asked it what ingredients are being used in this meal. I'm going to hit enter to send this off. Uh, you don't hit start chatting. Whenever you're done typing in your response, just hit enter and then you'll be put in the queue once again. So this is a little bit time consuming, but it's only going to take about 34 seconds and it's actually analyzing the entire picture, all the ingredients right now. So for how useful this is, the time that I have to wait in order to get a response doesn't really bother me all that much. So now that I'm number one in the queue, it is generating my response. And now my response is generated and it says, this meal appears to be a grilled salmon dish with asparagus and pomegranate on top. The ingredients used in this meal are salmon, asparagus, and pomegranate. So obviously it didn't get the onions, which is okay. We can tell that those are onions, but to be honest with you, I didn't know that these were pomegranates. And it analyzed the image and it knew that this was a grilled salmon dish without me giving it any information beforehand, it analyzed that this was salmon. So this is very, very powerful stuff. I could even expand on this and ask it to guide me through cooking this salmon as shown. I can ask it to guide me through cooking this dish and send it off. And then it will give me a little guide on how it would go about cooking this grilled salmon dish as shown in the picture. So after about 35 seconds of waiting, it's taken this image right here that I uploaded, that I found, maybe I, maybe I liked this image. And what it's done is it's given me a step-by-step -step guide now on how to cook this dish. So it says preheat your grill or grill pan to high heat, season the salmon fillets with salt, pepper, and any other desired seasonings. Grill for about four to five minutes. While your salmon is grilling, cook the asparagus by steaming or roasting them in the oven. So it's even telling me how to cook the asparagus down here, even though the salmon is the main dish. In the meantime, chop up the pomegranate seeds and mix them with a little bit of lemon juice to prevent them from oxidizing. So this is a very in-depth ingredient and recipe guide. Then it tells me to place the grilled salmon on a plate and top it off with the asparagus and pomegranate mixture. 
So right off the bat, it's safe to say that my mind is blown. I uploaded some random picture I found on the internet and what it did is it told me what it was with no previous information provided. And it also guided me on how to cook it and it gave me a step-by-step -step instruction list with ingredients on how to cook this dish and prepare it for myself. So let's dive into some other examples and see how this can work in different scenarios. Next, I'm going to take this image of this castle chateau type building in the background and this willow tree in the foreground with some water. And I'm going to ask it to describe this image in detail and see what kind of information it provides when describing this image. So first I'm going to hit upload and start chat to get this going. And I'm first in the queue, so this is only going to take seven seconds to populate in here. Just like that, it's populated in here. Now I'm going to ask it to describe this image in detail. I'm going to hit enter to send this off. So what it generated here is it says, this image shows a large old castle sitting on a hill overlooking a body of water. This is sitting on a hill and it is overlooking a body of water. The castle has a tall pointed roof and several turrets. That is very true. The water in front of the castle is calm and reflects the image of the castle. There are several trees in the bank of the water and their reflections can be seen in the water. The sky is clear and blue with a few fluffy clouds. The sun is shining down on the castle, casting long shadows on the ground. The overall atmosphere of this image is peaceful and serene. So far, so good. This is actually describing the image very well. So now I'm going to ask it a question that I kind of hope gets wrong because it would be pretty crazy if I got this right. Now, this image was actually taken in France. I got it off Unsplash. So I can see the location of where this image was taken. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask mini GPT-4, if you had to take a guess, where was this picture taken? And if it guesses France, that's going to be pretty crazy. So I have it typed out. If you had to take a guess, where was this image taken? I'm going to hit enter and send it off. So as of right now, it is generating its response. Kind of hoping it doesn't know where this picture was taken because that would actually be insane. And as I was hoping, wouldn't happen, it guessed it right. It says it could be a well-known castle or chateau in a European country such as France or Germany. So with this little information, it numbered it down to two countries, and of those two countries, one of those countries is correct. I've changed the URL on the image, so there is nothing on the URL of the image that I uploaded that could reflect this castle being in France, so it's nothing to do with the image I've uploaded. It's actually just taken in this information and provided a location based on the geographical features and also the architecture. So if that doesn't blow your mind, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what will. Now the next picture I'm going to chat with mini GPT-4 on is this AI picture I generated on Midjourney. If you want to generate pictures like this on Midjourney, I suggest you check out my Midjourney tutorial that I just uploaded. I'll leave a link to that in the upper right hand corner. Um, photography is changing. And now with mini GPT-4, how you interact with these pictures that you do take is also changing. So I'm going to hit upload and start chat. So the picture is just loaded in, and even though this is AI generated, it looks like a real person. So what I'm going to do is ask mini GPT for how old is the person in this picture? And let's see if it can give an adequate age range. So I've asked it what age range is the person in this picture. I'm going to send it off. And if I'm guessing right now, it looks like late 50s, early 60s, but it also could be older. Um, but we are going to see what mini GPT-4 generates. So the response it gave me was this person in this image appears to be an older man with a long white beard and a pirate hat, which is true. It is difficult to determine his age range without more information. Now I'm going to ask it to just take a guess of his age range because I think we can ask it to take a guess and it will actually just generate a response. So that's what I'm going to do next. So I've asked it if you had to take a guess on his age, what would it be? Kind of forcing mini GPT-4 to give an age range or a specific age that this person might be, even though it's AI generated. So I'm just going to send this off. And we forced it out of mini GPT-4 based on the appearance of the person in this image. I would estimate that he is likely in his late 50s or early 60s. However, it is difficult to determine an exact age without more information. So just as I was hoping, it did say late 50s or early 60s. Now this guy seems like he's been through a lot. So that seems like an adequate age range for this character here. Now, while we end out here, I'm just going to have a little bit of fun and let's say that this AI character I generated was going to be part of an animated short film that I was making or something of that matter. What I'm going to do is ask it to give me a name for this character for my short film. And let's see what kind of response or what kind of name it gives this guy. So what I've done is I've asked it to give me a name for this character. He's a protagonist pirate in my short film. And what I'm going to do is actually adjust the temperature here. The higher the temperature number, the more creative the responses are going to be. So you wanted a very straightforward response with a lot of logic behind it, very bland, pretty boring, then pick 0 
But if you want a very creative response, pick two. What I'm going to do is just change it to 1.5. So I want this pirate to have a witty name and I want to see what mini GPT-4 generates for this character. I'm going to send it off. So I kind of plagiarized another name. It said, how about the name Captain Jack Sparrow? This name is well known from the popular movie Pirates of the Caribbean. But then down here it says, alternatively, you could use other pirate themed names such as Hook, Blackbeard, Redbeard, Barbosa, or Savage. So this is a very powerful tool and idea. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please go down and drop a like. I would highly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Also, while you're down there dropping a like, if you don't mind hitting that subscribe button, I would also appreciate that. All right, I'll see you in the next one.